What up, fellow nerds? Welcome to Timeline to Judgment Day, Terminator, Part 3, Rise of the Machines. Uh, this is our third in a series going over the Terminator movies. Until we hit Dark Fate <laughs> on November 1st. Actually, for us, it'll be uh, Halloween night. So, uh, remember, if you like what you see, to hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit, Give us a like on the video. And ring the bell to be notified of future videos. And share this video with all your friends because they do want to see it. Trust me. Ba-bum. Ba-bum, bum, ba-bum. Bum, 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 Terminator! All right. You know, that music is actually <laughs> eerily similar to the music that's in Alien. Really? They were both huh. written by it's James almost Cameron. As if, yeah, it's almost as if it had a similar director. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that same Casio keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, both, both series seem to break down at, at the third installment. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Terminator 3 broke down pretty quick. Uh, kind that's of like I'm an saying. old machine. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> like Alien 3 was no good Terminator 3 is no good and they're both not by James Cameron so that's that'll uh, give you a, yeah. your first hint but you know what they, they were showing his face an awful lot in a lot of the um, uh, commercials and everything uh, the advertisements for this just like they did for um, Terminator Salvation and Terminator Genesis and, and Dark Fate so uh, you know we'll see what happens with Dark Fate but um, yeah so Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines mm-hmm. We learn that Judgment Day is inevitable. It was not stopped, as we uh, we were led to believe, but it was only delayed. Delayed till when, do you say? Until, what was it? July 25th, 2004. At 618. 618, yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so 2004, look out for it. Oh, wait, that already... Okay. Yeah, we're all right. <laughs> we, we gotta move back. Like we said, twenty twenty nine is uh, right now. All right. So uh, we are introduced to um, another uh, Terminator that looks just like Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, but this one is actually not the T eight hundred. This is still a Model one hundred one, but this is now what they refer to as a T eight fifty. So we're gonna learn as we go through these movies that um, Skynet. Uh, as a learning computer, it's uh, it's still doing a little bit of learning. It's uh, doing a lot of, you know, trial and error, figuring things out. Uh, and it instead decides uh, to send to fight the Resistance and to hunt down, uh, well, actually, John Connor's lieutenants because they can't find John Connor this time. Because he went off the grid. He went off the grid. He's, he's uh, uh, riding his moped and living <laughs> life uh, hard. And I don't know. We'll and get he's got to steal <laughs> drugs from veterinarians. <laughs> So, oh, John. Wow. That's that's our hero, everybody. He's going <laughs> to protect us against the machines. He's going to save us. The, the whiny, skinny little dude breaking into vet clinics. He's a slow developer. He's a late bloomer. All right? clearly, clearly. Give him a moment. Or years, well, decades. He, you know, because they thought it was all good, so his skills kind of got laxed. Right. Yeah. But he still sees these things in his dreams, so he knows they're still coming. At least that's what he says. Yeah. So at this point in the timeline, Skynet has finally figured out that, hey, the Resistance seems to have a knack at capturing our robots and sending them back in time. We're going to need something a little bit more uh, powerful, something a lot stronger that can actually fight our own creations. Um, and so what they do is they send back what they consider an upgrade to the T-1000. Now... If uh, you guys read the novels and the comics and the Wikipedia pages um, multiple times like uh, I did. Nerd. And, uh, yes, I am. I am. <laughs> Hello, fellow nerds. <laughs> yeah, so they actually go into a lot of uh, background and detail about how they developed the TX, or the Terminatrix, as it's called. Um, terrible name, by the way. Um, Skynet, come on. Agreed. Be more creative, guys. You're, you're a learning computer. Not cool. Terminatrix, yeah, no, they're they're good they're good with making robots. Not they are them. good with making robots, and, not naming them. Yeah, they don't really care about the names. And do they have that kind of flair to put the Terminatrix on it? I mean, market it a little bit better. Come I on. Mean, but apparently, what they did was they started pitting the Terminatrix up against T eight hundreds, T nine hundreds, which uh, I don't believe were ever introduced to. And with that name, think in this one, no, in the, the pitting is totally Chronicles. different. But uh, yeah, so what it does is it. Uh, 
puts them in battle against all of these um, machines. And if it loses, what they do is they tweak it, they upgrade it until it becomes what uh, what they have uh, that they send back to find John Connor. A Terminator killer. Yes, it is definitely a Terminator killer. It is not intended just to kill humans, but also kill Terminators. It is the best of both worlds as uh, Skynet sees it. It's got the hardened um, endoskeleton like the uh, T-800 and the T-850, but it is also covered in the liquid metal just like the T-1000. And instead of just having stabbing weapons, we were talking about this before, it actually has an onboard plasma cannon, which they found kills T-800s. It also has the uh, the ability <laughs> to link to other electronics. It and, does. And control things without Wi-Fi and multiple things from miles away. Yes, be able to control cop cars <laughs> without Wi-Fi or Bluetooth <laughs> from a remote location. She touched one cop car and I think got four of them. Yeah, so. yeah. And other vehicles. I think there was like a fire truck. And, and there was an ambulance. Yeah, an ambulance. And they, they, yeah. were, they were all linked. They just should have had like a train, like Thomas the Tank Engine <laughs> coming to. Because... I mean, why not? Hey, you know what, guys? We're, we're thinking about it in today's terms with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Maybe they had some sort of weird satellite link thing, futuristic mumbo-jumbo tech that we just don't know about. So if you can't tell, this is the part where we say we didn't like the movie. <laughs> I think, once again, I think we all agreed that Terminator 2 was the best in the franchise. Yeah. Yes. I think we all think Terminator 3 is the worst. Definitely. So far. <laughs> Ooh, Doug's got another opinion. All right, can't so wait far. for that review. <laughs> well, we'll see. No, Dark I think Fate he's is maybe Dark Fate. Oh, I see. <laughs> we'll see. see. We'll see. I got high hopes for Dark Fate. I do, too. Okay. But getting back to Terminator 3, I think it starts out on a bad note for me because when the T-850 <sighs> comes back, it knows to look for the keys and the visor. Yes. How does How it know, would it know that? Right, exactly. it's just the drawback. I'm like, they're oh, they're just pandering to the old. They movies. were. That is literally all they're doing, and they even do it again when John Connor, who again, supposed to be the genius, uh, you know, um, hacker kid leader General of the Fighter. resistance, General John Connor, and he says, "What? You don't remember me, Hostel of Vista, baby? Really? Come on." Buddy, you. Well, this is the guy who, when got hurt <laughs> riding his moped and avoiding a deer, went and broke into a veterinarian clinic and just <sighs> took some medicine that he had no idea what it did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, apparently because they tell him what it did and he is totally shocked. If he's our last hope, we're all dead. We are all dead. But uh, yeah, so uh, the T eight fifty. I don't. Did he have a name in this one? I don't remember. I don't remember. We'll have to put in the comments below. Uh, look it up for us. Tell us uh, what, uh, because I think he was given a name um, when he was being introduced to, um, uh, what's her name? Brewster's, Kate. Kate Brewster's uh, dad, I think. But anyway, uh, yeah. So um, he actually explains to John, you know, John jokingly says, so what, do you guys all come off an assembly line? Yes. <laughs> I mean, what would you think? You know, John. Uh, of course. John, buddy, leader <laughs> of the resistance. Come on, guy, you should know this. <laughs> Especially well, yeah. if he's been trained all, you know, and all the all this stuff is canon, so he knows what his mom knows. So know? uh, we'll we'll pop in a scene uh, real quick right here. Um, there was actually one of the uh, the better previews that came out for Terminator Two before they ended up ruining the uh, surprise. There was actually one that did show the Terminators, the T eight hundreds being created, and again, that's where I said that uh, the name T eight hundred was originally uh, conceived. Is actually in this because it shows on the computer screen as they're going down the assembly line and being given the uh, Model 101 skin, Arnold Schwarzenegger skin, it actually said on the computer screen, T-800 Model 101. So, yeah, uh, this was established canon as far as back in uh, Terminator 2. That, yes, yeah. they do, in fact, come off of an assembly line. And we'll see that again more when we talk about uh, Terminator Salvation as well. And uh, the whole thing, this this movie really started having way too many Arnoldisms in it. The whole talk to the hand yeah. thing. Yo. And then he tries to play that off later. And I'm just like, ah. Oh. You know, I think this movie... We kind of talked about this before. Was kind of they're like, come on, let's get it. We can make this third movie. It'll be great. And I was like, ah, I'm not sure. I'll do it, but you have to give me all of this stuff. Like we know Arnold had a gym membership yep. that he had, could leave at any time. In his contract, yep. He probably had creative control over his dialogue, and that's why we got so many of these Arnold that just did not play off well. He's and a he robot. Was, he didn't act as well as a robot as he did in Terminator the first two movies. He was mm-hmm. you could tell that he wasn't the same. Yeah, he phoned it in. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he was maybe just having fun with it. I mean, you got to think, this is 
uh, Arnold shortly after what Jingle All the Way, I, th- I think. <laughs> so I mean, he was just he was a goofball. He's goofball Arnold. Uh, he's di- uh, Mr. Freeze Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Greatest Batman movie ever. We can't we can't rever- review those first four movies because of, well, the first one. Uh, but my God. All right. Yeah. You know, we we got the uh, one of the, one of the things that bugged me, and maybe it makes sense, but when she the. TX yeah. is in the veterinary thing and she licks the blood. Oh, and oh. she's like, Oh my God, it's Jeff uh. Connor. <laughs> and I'm just like, is, Does she go licking blood everywhere? <laughs> I could see from the writing standpoint them thinking, Oh, right, she's got this new feature. She can tell yeah. by licking the blood. Well, <laughs> go, go. She can't open up the... her finger and pull it in. It's right. got to be licking. <laughs> Because she she's an infiltration. <laughs> this is exactly because what, I was what looks normal. Right. People licking blood off the floor. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's just. Okay. I thought that was put in there just for the wow factor they were going for. So. Well, going back to Jeez. the extended universe uh, in the books, in the novelization, they actually do point out that this was apparently purposely built into the TX. This is an updated feature, DNA, <laughs> DNA reability on its tongue. <laughs> This is actual canon. <laughs> this is canon. Oh, yeah. Man. Yep. Yep. Uh, Skynet did that on purpose. Mm. To make it look sexy. Oh, God. Speaking of looking sexy, um, you mentioned uh, some of the uh, the new updates to this, uh, to the TX. Yeah, uh, like when she's in the stoplight, when she's yeah. pulled over by a cop, and she mentioned, she looks up at the at some <clears> billboard, <throat> and uh, the lady has, you know, large knockers. Yeah. So she grows hers at, at the moment to distract the cop. <clears throat> Which is kind of dumb because she ends up killing the cop anyway. Right. So why the distraction? Oh, and... Well, she um, had to get him close enough so she could reach into his car and control <laughs> all the cop cars. Oh, yeah. Car. <laughs> okay, yeah, remember that. but she also had to steal the cop's gun? Because she liked it. She liked it. His mm-hmm. gun, even though she had one. She has a plasma rifle in her arm, but she <laughs> likes his gun. Yeah. Because the gun will make her fit in. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, what? she does end up using it. So good for her. You know, there's also that scene where <laughs> oh, good for her. Arnold comes driving in and nails the TX with Kate underneath his car, and she's like completely untouched. Yes, it is the most ridiculous scene in probably. He, the whole he used movie. his targeting computer to <laughs> yes. make sure that he did it perfect. He didn't use his Jedi abilities. No, stay also, on target. I also didn't like when we. <clears throat> I don't know if we mentioned this in this video that he was not there to obey John Connor anymore. He was there to no. Obey what's Kate name? Brewster. Kate, Kate Brewster. Yeah. So, John's future wife. Yeah. So he starts he starts choking John Connor to get a better response out of him. I'm like, and then he lets, I just, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. that was another thing that kind of... Uh, um, well, he was neutered by the medicine he took earlier that's in the true. movie. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. The, maybe in the movie they're like, Kate's really the genius behind this resistance. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, I, I didn't like how quickly mm. she got over her... Fiance getting killed either. Right. Well, let's talk about that scene. Oh, moments. Because oh. the fiance's dead. This is an infiltration terminator that can assume other identities. And she's running. She sees her fiance, which is really the TX. And she's like running, like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, uh, this person's. Oh, and yeah, it turns, you're still alive. And it shows its true colors. When and it turns, turns back into time. its uh, default TX form. She has what plenty of time doing? to turn around and run. <laughs> this is one of your primary targets. And you make such a dipshit move like that that she's able to get away because once again Arnold comes in with the bus or the truck and you know, the, the shoots hearse. a rocket. He drove up with a that's, hearse. That's right, the hearse and, and shot shoots a rocket. rocket yeah. at her. Oh my and God. I don't know if you saw, uh, but when he fired the rocket, she was on the other side of that door. Oh yeah, the blast back area. <laughs> right, she yeah. would have got hit. Oh totally. But they go back to the next scene, she's yeah. just fine. She's like, hmm? Uh, so one thing that I forgot to mention in our previous review, and I want to bring it up because it ties into this as well. So we mentioned um, in The Terminator that Arnold Schwarzenegger did a lot of prep with weapons. He really prepared for that role. Robert Patrick did as well for the T-1000. He learned how to run um, like a machine, and he learned how to run without breathing because he wanted to look like a robot. Yeah, he did an excellent to the, job. To the oh. point where, at one point, he was actually running faster than um, Edward Furlong's moped was moving, and so he had to purposely slow himself down in order to wow. uh, make the chase scene work. Wow. So, um, what Good is the Robert actress's Patrick. name for uh, the TX? Uh, My God, we were just talking about it. God. Anyway, put it, in the, put it in the comments uh, below for the the, actri- the actress. Uh, sorry about that. Katana um, Loken? Is that it? Katana Loken. Yes. 
That is correct. Yes. That's her name. Okay. She actually did training herself because she wanted to be able to mimic, mimic Robert Patrick. So good on her. She was able to, you know, kind of look like a machine, do the same running motion without uh, looking like she was breathing. Um, why they felt it was necessary for her Terminator to show so much emotion, I don't know. I don't know if that was like a thing that they had written in on purpose to make uh, make her a better infiltrator or, an or what was going on. Machine or and something. I, yeah, I don't really know. What was I look up at this that. whole movie as just a complete cash grab. Because oh, yeah. Yeah. they Agreed. got they had this rights and they wanted to cash in on it. I mean, Claire Danes is an excellent actress. Yes. And she was not good in this movie. And when that happens, I blame the director. And, I mean, everything in this <clears throat> just fell flat for me. Yep. It was almost, I was really hoping that I'd find something positive to talk about. Mm-hmm. Watching this again, because I try to be more positive and I look for the good in things. Man, there was almost, well, there was There's one good not... thing in it and we will get to it at the end. Yeah. And again, I, I think that... The story um, that um, if you get into the story like Doug does, you know, and you read all the background stuff, that's great. But with this movie, I think that they just want to have some more liquid metal. You know, that was cool. Everybody liked it. Let's do it again. Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much what I thought. Yeah, and let's also make it sexy. Yeah, yeah. And let's hide a bunch of weapons in Sarah Connor's grave. Right. (laughs) Okay. Speaking of Sarah Connor. (laughs) Oh, boy. So, you guys know about why she wasn't in Terminator 3, right? She didn't want to do it because she knew she'd be killed right away, right? Well, that was part of it. She also hated the script. (laughs) Oh, good for her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Arnold said yes if he got his gym time. Uh, But, um, yeah. Claire Dane said yes if she could be a veterinarian and not a regular (laughs) doctor. If she could be a veterinarian, right? (laughs) We don't know that for a fact. We're just making that up. She really likes animals, guys. But, yeah. uh, so If it's cold enough. No. (laughs) <laughs> so no no Sarah Connor because she looked at the script and said nope <laughs> no I would I will literally I would like to be dead in this movie so yeah. as you wish <laughs> um yeah uh, so they do add a little bit more so I, you guys have probably are noticing this by now I love the lore of Terminator there's a lot to it so the story overall is not great um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, T850 likes sunglasses. That's apparently something that's now programmed into the 800 series now. Uh, is he gets upset when his sunglasses are broken and has to get a new pair at the gas station? Um, cool, I guess. But I do like the idea that Skynet um, feels that it needs to learn from uh, its mistakes in the past and thinks that apparently the TX is. Uh, the next uh, the next successful thing. And uh, Arnold even mentions, uh, he says, no, I'm obsolete. When John asks him, can we beat her? Unlikely. Mm. Yeah, because uh, according to, uh, you know, what it feels, what has been programmed, uh, it doesn't think that it stands a chance. Um, and uh, as we see, the only way that he is actually able to beat her is by effectively terminating himself. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, very true. Uh, I mean, it's funny because, you know, we find out in this movie that Skynet is inevitable. They're mm-hmm. going to come, you know, stopping the original <clears throat> Judgment Day, only delayed it, you yep. know, moved it seven, eight years back. Yeah. We ended up finding out that, um, yes, the Air Force did acquire a backup of all the work that Cyberdyne had been working on. Uh, I think they mentioned it in this movie. It was either in the movie or in a deleted scene. They kind of offhandedly man- mentioned, uh, yeah, it's a good thing that we got all of these backups before Cyberdyne was blown up. <laughs> just moments before right um, <laughs> we <knew>. so, <laughs> so even if uh, even if um, Uncle Bob hadn't left his arm behind I guess uh, they still would have had something to work with but yeah, yeah so once again um, the person who actually uh, goes about creating Skynet not really the villain we see that um, uh, General Brewster he's an all around good guy like he's very hesitant he's not all that trusting he still thinks more testing needs to be done and he, um, finally, when they decide that they're going to activate Skynet, he says, no, nope, I'll be the one to do it. I need to be the one to carry that responsibility. And, yeah, it's just the push of literally the Y button on his keyboard. <laughs> yeah, it has to be him. It, it has it, to though. be him, yeah. With the War Machine, War, uh, war Games computer. <laughs> you know, and he, he didn't believe Skynet was the answer. No, no, he did not. He was very hesitant, you know, and his boss at the Pentagon, when he calls, it's like, well, your uh, <laughs> civilian uh, people say it's great. <laughs> well, yeah, because they get paid for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're not testing all of this out. They're just like, it'll work. Mm-hmm. My development's 
<laughs> Locked on. <laughs> so, I mean, but when they're trying to figure out how to stop Skynet, I mean, uh, where do you think the general's going to send him? I mean, that's his daughter. This is, this is feeding to what you were talking oh, about. Yeah, there's, there's no chance of stopping Skynet. Not at that point. So they actually explain. So things are actually happening throughout this whole movie, and um, you're not really... They're not very heavy-handed with it. So, again, another good point, you know, yeah. that they kind of carry over from the other movies. They're not outwardly saying that Skynet already exists. They're just, oh, hey, my cash register isn't working. Oh, hey, this TV's been acting up. Or, oh, you know, and they're kind of touching on, hey, this technology is kind of acting up. And it turns out this whole time there's been a virus that's been uh, spreading throughout all these computers. And it's that Skynet, It's really. too late. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's too late. And so, it finally gets in the military computers at the does. end is when they, you know, he does the chicken bird to hit the yep. gas button. But, like you said, he's a good guy in this film. He's oh, yeah, a good guy. Yeah. I mean, what he does, and kind of what I was talking about earlier at the end, you know, he's like, take these codes and take it to this place so you can stop Skynet. He knew he was only sending them there to save them. Yes. That was a safe there haven no stopping from Skynet. the nuclear war because mm-hmm. he knew... From what he learned, they were probably important to the human resistance, and it was his daughter. Oh yeah. So he sent her to save her, not to stop Skynet. And I, I think mm-hmm. that was probably the one redeeming quality that I, that I found in this movie was he made a decision like a father and a general. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And John Connor cried about it like a baby. Okay. The other thing that I <laughs> oh god, such a bad actor to play John Connor. So in the first two movies. Uh, the older, grizzled, scarred John Connor that we see. Yeah, I could see him. That's that's General John Connor, the leader of the Resistance. But for the futuristic John Connor that they show in Terminator 3, this is the same actor with a little bit of aging makeup. And it's like, <laughs> mm, nope, still not buying it. Not not this John Connor. You know what I think they, what they wanted to do? I think they, with him being, you know, the meek one, I think they wanted uh, uh, Claire, Dan- Claire Danes to be the strong one. Cause clearly, well, she clearly was more so than him, yeah. Clearly, for sure. before they even they filmed the movie, she was a stronger actress. You know? Yeah, so they... He's, uh, he not well, being an actress well, did, at all. She did survive being run over and being in the black, back blast area <laughs> of a light anti-tank weapon. Uh, so she's, she's pretty strong. But so, I don't know if she fits the bill of a, like a Linda, Linda Hamilton no, type No, not quite. But, she, but then Connor. again, Linda Hamilton wasn't at first in The Terminator. She had yeah, to grow into waitress. it. So, but you know. do we get that development out of her? I don't think we do. I we, don't think we did either. We no. don't, but we could have. I think if they would have, I don't know, if they would have uh, lessened the amount of jokes. and uh, We were talking about this a little bit earlier. If they'd have thrown out the script and got a new one? Uh, God. Well, <laughs> you could see that they had the, the workings of a good script kind of in there. They had a couple of good ideas. Good and they had a couple points. of dark parts and some good, you know, serious moments. And then they'd throw in... Oh, uh, uh, the T850 goes into a strip club. Okay, cool. I guess. Can we can we move on with like uh, you know? C- come on, where's my dark, awesome, action packed? Yeah, let's do something that sci-fi. involves the script rather than making things up to throw into the script. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's a lot of things that could have been done much better with this. It had potential. It really did. Uh, but it just was not our favorite Terminator movie. And uh, like we said in the beginning, possibly the worst one so far, unfortunately. I definitely think it is. Yeah. Um, I don't... Th- do we have any other uh, points? Oh, um, you know what? I think I do have uh, one more point that I did want to make about this. Uh, and it had to do with um, the uh, with the CPU chip. So I kind of mentioned this, and I, I kind of forgot to bring it up in uh, Terminator 2. But uh, Arnold mentions this... Uh, when he's uh, when he's talking about the type of things that he knows as as a Terminator, he mentions that his chip was reactivated by uh, um, uh, Brewster. What's her name again? Karen Kate Brewster. Brewster. Kate Brewster. That uh, it was reactivated by her, and she flipped on his read write capability and programmed him with things that he would need to know in order to make his mission more successful. You don't hear about John doing that. In fact, this T eight fifty mentions he was the Terminator that killed John in the future. Yes. He terminated him. And that leads me to believe. So one of the uh, one of the theories is that this Terminator Three is actually an alternate possibility, an alternate possible timeline. And Dave kind of mentioned, uh, what was your thought on that? This is a kind of a um, what do you say, a multiverse, basically. Yeah, multiverse. You know, where that decision, you know, yeah. created a new universe mm-hmm. when they went the other way with that decision. <clears throat> so maybe by 
uh, delaying Judgment Day by you know tossing the things into the into the molten lava. Maybe they just created a uh, neuter pun intended, <laughs> uh, worse version of John Connor. <laughs> yeah, no, true. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of things could happen there. I have a multi multi vote. I can't even say it. Multiverse. Well, thank you. Theory about like life in general that the, I share with a bunch of scientists, mm. but in this movie, you know, in this universe, there's so many of them. If you've ever seen mm-hmm. the timeline, if we can get a picture of that and plop it up there or yeah. something, yeah, it's it's incredible. But I, like Keith said, that might not be a multiverse. What would that be? It's more of like time branches. Same yeah. universe, yeah. just different time, parallel times. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it all depends on how you look at it. It could be looked at as multiverse, time yeah. branches. I, can, I tend, for this movie, just tend to look at it as time branches only because mm-hmm. a multiverse is all, I always think of it as it's always been there. Mm-hmm. Each each fr- faction of the universe has always been there. So then you have branches in each one creating a lot more, where this, it seems, one universe and we're going to get these things. Oh. And, you know, I do think, since we know that Dark Fate is kind of a sequel to Terminator 2, this is going to be a different story after Terminator 2. So basically... Terminator Three, Salvation. Yeah, so this is supposed all... to be like. Well, they they also said uh, when Terminator Genesis came out that that was supposed to be the next Terminator Three. This is going to take place right after Terminator Two, and it was going to reset the the universe. Now they're saying the same thing with uh, Terminator Dark Fate. So yeah, I guess we could. And it's too bad that the. I mean, we'll get to it, but yeah. uh, Genesis was paying so much. I really didn't think it was that bad. I uh, can't wait to watch it again for our uh, review. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But thanks, everybody, for watching, and come back next week for Timeline to Judgment Day, Terminator Salvation. Will we play the Bale Rant?